So I'm going to get started on my uh, DIY homebrew airplane tug. I'm going to use it on my 150 and I'm going to make it connect up to the, uh, the tail wheel. We'll be able to ride up on it and uh, I'll drive it. Now what this is from, this is a, a mobility chair, power chair. I uh, got it used on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid 400, 500 bucks for it. It was the whole, I had the whole chair. So I've got all the chair parts. I can probably sell everything that I'm not gonna use for a hundred bucks. And I've got a nice little setup here for three, 400 bucks. I did a preliminary test, put a little platform in here, jacked up the tail, uh, set my tail wheel in here, and I was able to drive it uh, just to prove that I did have the torque and power that I need to move the airplane, and it looks like I do. So that being the case, it's time to get this thing modified to be used for a tug. And what I'm gonna do, right now this is, this is too narrow. The, the wheel does fit in here, but for some reasons where I need to have some, a mechanism in here, uh, a little tray that's gonna hold the wheel, and um, I need, I'm gonna have an actuator, linear actuator that's gonna uh, pull up and lock that tray that holds the wheel in place. I need a little more room, lateral room here left to right. So what I'm gonna do is, well, and I'll, I should mention something. These, these power, at least this particular power chair, this is a Jazzy Elite, I believe. The engineering on these is incredible. These things completely break down. So this piece here, it's got these little levers you squeeze in, it unlocks uh, these latches on these pins, it slides out on these. This normally would be the battery tray if it's a power chair. Um, then you got the same type of mechanism here. I could undo this latch here and this one. And then um, these would fold apart and then these can disconnect so everything can break down into these component pieces, which I guess for power chair company is great for being able to ship these in a small box. Um, and also just the modularity of the components for maybe repairs later. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. Wherever I've got a little silver Sharpie, I'm just going to take a cut and take a cut here. And I'm going to take a cut here and here. And I'm going to separate this whole assembly and I'm gonna pitch it. I'm not gonna really care about all these. I'm not ever breaking this thing down again. So I'm, I'm removing all of this mechanism. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got some uh, one by one and a half inch steel stock. I'm gonna make this thing five inches wider than it is. So currently it's 12 inches inside to inside. I'm gonna push that out to 17 and I'm gonna weld a bar across here and then a bar across here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm also cutting right here and here and then right up here and up here and what that's going to let me do is is separate these out and keep keep this going down here and this all with this side and this one all with this side and then um what i'm going to end up doing is i am going to use this piece here but I don't really care about all, this all has to come out of the way because the tire has to pass through here. So what I'm just gonna do is just weld up all this right here so it's a permanent uh, affixed piece and do away with the removable mechanism crap they have here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna let me have about an, uh, a nine inch wide open area that the tire, the tail wheel, can slip through here, can just ride through there. And then I'm gonna have uh, mounted to this, this tray area here, um, a, a little bit of a V-shaped, a cup-shaped uh, plate steel on a pivot. And it'll pivot down and, and set low to the ground here. I'll probably have a little roller in front of it. Just a little tiny, I don't know, half inch, five eighths roller uh, or some bearings or something stacked up to allow the wheel to roll up onto that plate and then once it's on the plate, I'm gonna have a linear actuator somewhere on one of these, probably this side here, that uh, will then, with, a, with an arm, that'll uh, shorten and it'll pull this V-shaped plate that the wheel is sitting on up like this, and then the wheel is kind of captured in this little cradle, right? 
that's my plan for now. Uh, who knows how this goes? You know how these things can change over time, but that's where I'm gonna start and I'll iterate from there. Um, so there we go. For now, I'm just gonna use the controller that the system came with and the, um, the pendant uh, with a joystick and it's got like a five foot cord. For now, I think I'm just gonna do that and I'll just walk behind it with the cord. Um, ultimately though, I think I am gonna make this uh, radio controlled wireless. Uh, that does present a little bit of challenges in that these motors are not so simple to drive as they seem. They are DC motors, but they have um, electromechanical brakes that you have to disengage first, which means I've got to drive, come up with a custom driving circuit, probably using an Arduino or something that before you can actually drive the motor, you uh, disengage the electromechanical brake with a relay, uh, just a couple of maybe uh, 50 milliseconds before you drive, um, and then re-engage them after you drive, which is currently how the, the existing system works. So if you are driving these power chairs, most of them all have that. You'll hear a little click before they, they go, and you'll hear a little click when they stop. That's that electromechanical brake in each unit. And I, I don't want to do away with electromechanical brake because they are very useful if the uh, aircraft is sitting on a slope and I remove the power from the system. Well, I don't want this thing to just roll away with my airplane and I don't wanna always have to keep power keeping it there. So I do wanna use the electromechanical brakes that are integrated into the motors. It just will require a custom circuit. It's not just as simple as using an you know, RC car uh, brushed motor controllers and a, and a receiver and a transmitter. There'll be a little bit more to it than that, but some not, nothing that an Arduino and a little bit of code can't really quickly overcome. So first though, I gotta handle the mechanical and first things first is start hacking away at it.